Good morning, NBCC. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. So glad you can worship with us on this Christmas morning as we remember the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray you join me as we uh, worship him right now.
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Azemdi, for leading us in that wonderful time of worship. Thank you to everyone who is worshiping with us today on Christmas morning. Our gathering today is online only, especially to thank our amazing volunteers who serve so faithfully. So to everyone, I truly hope you have an amazing and blessed day full of joy and peace. I would like to invite anyone who may be new to NBCC to join us for our weekly gatherings, especially next Sunday, January 1st, as we start the new year. We're a diverse group of Jesus followers located in the San Francisco Bay Area. We worship together online every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And you can watch us from our YouTube channel or from our website at NBCCBayArea.com. We are also back together in person next Sunday at our Redwood City or San Jose campuses. We meet at 11 a.m. And for more information, including how to plan a visit, please visit our website. We'd love to see you and start the new year off together. We're also coming off our incredible Christmas celebrations this past week, and you can find them on demand on our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and our website. And this gathering is also available to share with anyone who needs some Christmas cheer. Finally, thank you for all those who have supported the work we do here at NBCC through this incredible year of ministry. And if you're able to make a year-end gift to help us start strong for 2023, you can do so through the NBCC app on our website, nbccbayarea.com, or by texting NBCC Give to 77977. Now, here's Pastor Herman with a special guest to lead us in a Christmas devotional. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. And if you have family and friends hanging out with you who may not necessarily be celebrating Christmas, well, I want to say to them, happy holidays. We're delighted that you are part of this experience. Now, listen, I've got a super, super special message I want to share with you guys in just a few moments. But I've got somebody super special who's going to help me to teach this message today. He's my 14-year-old nephew, Elijah Wills. Give a shout out, man. Merry Christmas, everybody, especially the kids out there. I hope the gifts are everything you want and more. And to the kids who haven't opened their gifts yet, I hope that it's everything you want and more as well. Ah, praise God. Well, listen, guys, listen, we're going to talk to you about Christmas insights. There are three Christmas insights we want to pull out of the stories that surround the birth of Jesus. Uh, but before we jump into those insights, listen, Elijah is the newest member of the Hamilton's family and household. Is this your second Christmas with us? Yep, Christmas number two. Well, now, take a few moments. What is it like being a part of the Hamilton's household and family? Uh, it's very new. I remember leaving Nevada, um, leaving my family. Mom, dad, I love you. Brothers, love you a little bit too. Um, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's been a huge difference. Um, one of the main reasons I left was the education and just being able to come here and experience just such more uh, learning in uh, the school systems and seeing different cultures, backgrounds, it being more diverse. 
um, it's just been a great overall experience for me. Oh, fantastic. Listen, uh, Liza is also a junior leader in our NBCC Kids Ministry. What does it mean to be a junior leader? Uh, so the role of a junior leader is, I like to say like a leader, just, you know, you're a little younger. Um, and it's a great role because you're helping so many little kids kind of have more fun at church. Uh, I remember as a kid watching through the sermons, it was like a little, I um, might fall asleep here, you know, thinking Hopefully about the game. Hope you weren't falling asleep during my sermons, right? Yeah, so like falling asleep here, ah! you know, going to games there. <laughs> but it was just being able to see kids come and play games and learn a little bit about the Lord while they're doing it too. Mm -hmm. It's just been a great experience. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. You've been working with some of the adult leaders as well? Right, yeah. And the adult leaders have all been great. They've all helped mentor me. Um, Miss Pastor Sumi has helped me uh, instrumentally and just really uh, helped me step out of my comfort zone and talk to more kids uh, on my initiatives. All right, fantastic, fantastic. Well, listen, guys, uh, we're going to jump right into the teaching here. And you may or may not know that Luke, the Gospel of Luke, talks about the birth of Jesus from the perspective of Mary. The Gospel of Matthew talks about the birth of Jesus from the perspective of Joseph. We're going to start with Luke. And what's interesting about Luke in chapter 1 is he describes two miraculous births. Kids come into the lives of two separate families miraculously. Can you talk a little bit about that? All right. So, What are these two births I'm talking about? The first birth, we're going chronologically, is mm -hmm. Elizabeth. Elizabeth not being born but being pregnant. And what was special about that was she was really old, probably her 60s or 80s, not really old, but old. And she was described as barren, meaning she could not have kids anymore. Um, but through prayer, her and Zechariah were able to come together and conceive a child. Excellent. Uh, the second birth, which is uh, Mary becoming pregnant, it was unlike uh, Elizabeth, she was very young, probably around my age, 14. But she was a virgin. She had not had sexual intercourse yet. So it wasn't possible for her to have conceived a child yet. But she, through the power of the Lord, she still became pregnant. Excellent, excellent. Both births announced by an angel. You know the name of the angel? Gabriel. Ah, that's absolutely right. It's both super special births. Now, that leads to our first Christmas insight. What is it? Be open. Be open. And is there a, uh, is there a lesson attached to this insight? Be open. Uh, the paths uh, to unexpected miracles in our lives often require us to stretch or sacrifice. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, I particularly like this point. Here's the deal. It has a little bit to do with you. Mm -hmm. uh, that when it came on our radar that you were interested in coming to be a part of our family and to live here in California, uh, first, Rhonda and I, Lauren, was about to go out to college. We were salivating, if you will, at the prospects of being empty nesters. Uh, and then we learned that you wanted to come and, and live with us. So first, we were open. We were open. We spent some time praying about it, and we were thinking about just how amazing we could, we, we, all, we already knew that God was moving in your life in a really remarkable way. And, and here was an opportunity to be a part of it. So after praying about it, the three of us, me, Lauren, and Rhonda, decided that we would stretch. Uh, and that we'd welcome you and walk alongside you and make sure you had everything you needed to be all that God wanted you to be. Now, here's the deal. I thought we were stretching to be a blessing to you, but here's what happened. Some of you know I was raised by my granduncle and auntie, and I came into their lives much younger. I was about two years old when they were roughly the age that me and Rhonda are at this moment when Elijah comes into my, our lives. And... It is because of them that I am who I am and where I am today. And the Lord showed me a few months later that he had given me the same opportunity as an uncle to be a blessing to my nephew in the same way that my uncle and auntie had blessed me. Pass it forward a generation. Wow. That means that you are a miracle gift that God has sent into my life to bless me. I thought I was blessing you, man. You, at the end of the day, is me and you're my blessing mm -hmm. and the blessing for our family. So uh, I want to thank you for being that miracle. And man, God bless you. It's a big deal. Oh, wow. Uh, now, while here, Jesse didn't expect that. Uh, we're going, we're gonna, uh, here's the point for you. Be open. A lot of you are praying for God to do remar miraculous things in your lives. But sometimes God is going to stretch you, and cause you to lean in and make a sacrifice, move you towards generosity, and through those uh, avenues, he will surprise you. 
The answer to your prayers may not look like the way you think they will look. But he can transform your life if you let him mm. be, open. be open. All right. Now let's shift to Matthew. He's going to talk to us about Joseph and Joseph's perspective. And there's two insights that we want to pull from this. Now, you've got a brilliant mind. So I've asked you to recite these passages rather than read them. Mm. So what are the first couple of verses you're going to recite for us? 18 and 19. Out of Matthew first. chapter 1, Matthew correct? Matthew chapter 1. All right, go ahead. G this is a story of how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mm. mother, Mary, was engaged and to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man mm. and did not want to disgrace her publicly. Mm. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Wow. Wow. All right. What's the insight that comes out of that text? Be loving. All right. Number one, be open. Number two, always be loving. And is there a lesson attached to that insight? Um, I can treat you right even while I'm still in the process of forgiving you. All right, fantastic. What does the verse the text mean when it says Joseph was a righteous man? He followed God. All right. And what does it mean when it says that he didn't want to publicly disgrace her? Well, back at that time, uh, the act of committing adultery was punishable by being stoned to death. Mm -hmm. um, and when they were engaged, it was a, uh, a, like a contract. Mm -hmm. uh, you can imagine that. Um, so Joseph, who's tremendously hurt, uh, his heart broken, wa had every right to just be able to, you know, tell everybody what the sin she had committed, what he thought she had committed, and she would have been killed. Mm. But instead of, instead of doing that, he decided, I'm going to act kind. I'm going to do the loving thing. Wow. I'm going to break it quietly. Wow, that is fantastic. So here Joseph is, terribly hurt. The natural response is to hurt back. And that's how often we do, right? When we're having challenges with our relatives and our friends and people hurt us, we want to hurt back as though the cycle of hurt can produce a solution. But what does Joseph do? Rather than hurting back, he moves, he responds with love. Rather than acting and condemning, he responds with grace. Now, in that sense, he really does remind me of Jesus, right? Because when Jesus can condemn us, despite uh, what a lot of people think, he always opts to love us and not to condemn. Wow. Now, you've got a story about this uh, not responding with, with hurt to hurt. Tell us mm -hmm. about it. My brothers, I remember in quarantine, we'd watch movies. I'd get a snack, a cup of milk. And I remember my brothers, he would always steal my cup of milk. Wow. And he would drink from it. And me, I didn't want the cup of milk anymore, but I'd fight him over it. And we would fight for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And this would go on for days. He'd keep stealing my milk, stealing my milk, stealing my milk. Eventually, one day, I just said he could have it. Huh. And I walked away, grabbed myself my own cup of milk. Now, the next day, instead of just taking my milk, he asked for it. He said, hey, can I have the milk? Of course, I said no. That didn't matter to him. He took it anyways. But instead of just taking it, he, he, he asked. Wow. He changed his course. Oh, that's fantastic, fantastic. And I like this. I like this, this story because it doesn't have a perfect ending, right? Uh, you know, this notion that if you hurt me, I hurt you, and you hurt me back, this cycle keep hurting, that somehow we're going to get to a solution. It, ultimately, it's insanity. Elijah's story, that's how you move towards healing, right? His brother, back and forth, back and forth. Finally, he decides, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to act lovingly. I'm going to respond to pain with love. There's a shift in his brother's behavior. Not a perfect shift, but they begin to move towards a solution. What's the second lesson that's attached to this point? How I treat others is more about my character than it is to theirs. Excellent. What Joseph did as it relates to Mary was more about Joseph's character than Mary's. What Elijah did was more about his character. How you respond in the midst of pain, we like to think it's about the other person, but no, it's going to always be more about who you are and who I am. Praise God. All right. What's next? The, the next passage? Uh, so as he considered this, remember, Joseph's considering breaking the engagement with Mary. Mm -hmm. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Mm. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Mm. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. 
She's going to have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, mm. for he will save his people from all their sins. Wow. Praise God. And what is the insight attached to this passage? Be faithful. Be faithful. And what's the lesson that's attached to this insight? Trust God even when you don't understand. Wow. Trust God even when you don't understand. How does this show up in the text? Uh, we see this because Joseph, who's, when we already discovered, he's very hurt. He's sad. And he doesn't really understand what the angel's saying, you know, being conceived by the Holy Spirit while she's still a virgin. It's like, what? That's scientifically unexplainable. Uh, despite this, despite this confusion, despite not knowing what's going to come next, he still trusts in God's word and does as the Lord says. Oh, that's so powerful. That's so powerful. Now, I think there's an application here that you might want to share with other young people your age, right? Mm. Uh, yeah. When your parents tell you to do something, I know my parents tell me to do a lot of stuff. And <laughs> a lot of time I'm like, well, why? Why should I do this? What, what's in it for me? What's the benefit? And every time, whatever they've told me to do, it was for my benefit. Mm. Even if I don't understand it, even mm. if I didn't get it then, it's always helped me. And now you can try and do this yourself. I try and I struggle with it a lot is even when they tell you to do something, don't back talk. Just be like, you know what? Whatever they tell me to do is to help me. And I'm going to do it with a smile on my face with my best effort. Um, and this will help you with your relationship with God because God is going to ask you to do things that you're not always going to 100% understand what he's asking you to do or why he's asking you to do it. But doing it will always help you in the future. Wow. That's powerful for us adults. Here's the insight. He said it so eloquently. There will be times when we will need to trust God when we don't understand. Is there a final verse? Uh, so when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife. Wow. And what's the lesson attached to this? The wisdom of God always leads to winning. Wow. Did Joseph win? Oh, 100%. Wow. He's the adopted father of the Messiah, something talked about now, 2,000 years later. Wow. All right, guys. The three insights. Here's three, here's three things we ought to always practice. One, be open. Be willing to allow God to stretch us. Surprising blessings come that way. Two, always be loving. Meet pain with love. And three, always be faithful, beginning with God. May God bless you. I trust that you'll have a fabulous uh, New Year experience as you transition into a new year. Emmanuel, that word comes out of the Christmas story, the Christmas experience. It's about Jesus. It means God with us. That's the birth of Jesus is all about God being with us. And so may you know that God is with you as you go into a brand new year. God bless you. Merry Christmas. And since this is the last Sunday of the year, Happy New Year.